this morning was our first Sunday in December, which means we launch into a, a new series, and uh, we have titled this, Something to Believe, amen? We know that the world is looking for something to believe in, right? Amen. We know what they're looking for, too, this morning. It's right here in this place, amen? Our God is good today. Our God is awesome in this house. Amen. We come to give Him praise today. Guests, we're so glad you're here. We hope that you enjoy something about our service today. If you need information about us, please just see our Welcome Center. We would love to connect with you today. Luke chapter 1 and beginning at verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the, Lord, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Amen. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom shall be no end. Amen. And then Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How am I going to have a child? The first one in history to have a child, right? Like this. And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost is going to come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And then he opens it up and confirms it with this. For with God. That's right. For with God. Nothing shall be impossible. Amen. You want something to believe in this morning? How about believing in the impossible? Does anybody believe the impossible this morning? That our God specializes in moving in the impossible? What you don't see and what you don't think can happen, our God says, that's nothing for me. Amen. Mary was asked to believe. But what she was asked to believe seemed impossible. How could a woman who had never been with a man conceive a child? Better yet, how could God Almighty come to earth as a baby boy in a manger? You know, this all sounds impossible. But today I want to challenge you. I want to challenge someone in this place to believe in the impossible because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Let's pray and ask God to move in us today. Lord, we love you today. You are the God of the impossible. Lord, people came into this place today with things that they cannot figure out on their own. Situations that are overwhelming. Things that have come against them or their family. Their finances or their marriage. or Whatever's happened, oh God, we know that... Each of us come today with burdens, with situations, with things that press upon us. But we serve an awesome God. We serve a God that moves in the impossible. We serve a God that can do above what we ask or think today. And so we trust you today, Lord. And we ask you, God, to begin to move on every need, on everything that seems impossible, Lord Jesus. Let us not leave here today thinking that you cannot solve it today. And we give you praise for that. Blessed be the name of our Savior. 
and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's lift the roof off this place with our hand clap and with our praise. Well, we love you today. Thank you for your goodness today, God. Thank you for your blessings in this house. Thank you, Lord, that you move in the impossible today. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Something to believe in this morning, the impossible. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. You might be facing a situation that seems impossible right now, but I've come with good news. Our God specializes in the impossible. Jesus, the Messiah, would grow up as a poor, illegitimate boy. The Jewish people were under political domination. The idea that a Messiah could come forth in these circumstances would seem ludicrous. Also at the time, we know that he was ushered in by one called John the Baptist. This one that Elizabeth bare. A man who came dressed in bear skins and ate locusts. Yet he preached the coming of the Messiah. All of this began to move towards a pivotal event in Bethlehem. And we also know where the, the uh, shepherds came. And then a little later when the wise men came and found this young child in the house. We know that he made the impossible possible. Amen. This morning, I'm talking about a God who's not interested in your box that you have put him in today. He's not interested in the limitations that you have placed on him today. He's not concerned about how you can box him in today. He can go beyond your box. He can go beyond your thinking. He can go beyond your process. He can go beyond your calculation this morning. And he can move in the impossible. Amen? You know, uh, C.S. Lewis says, The whole thing narrows and narrows until it comes down to a little point. Small as the point of a spear. A Jewish girl at her prayers. A Jewish girl at her prayers. A young, virgin, Jewish girl simply praying and asking God, I'll be anything you want me to do. I'll, do who you, I'll be who you want me to be, God. Just going through her process of what she thought was a good thing. And before she knows it, there's an angel standing there. And the angel said, I've heard your prayers, and I know your heart, and I know exactly what kind of person you aspire to be. And God has found favor in you, and it's His time. His timing is now. His timing is ready to come to this earth and save the world that He created. And here this little girl says, oh yeah, that sounds great, angel, but how is this possible? Because I have not seen or been with a man. I don't know how this is going to happen. He said, don't you worry about it, ma'am, with God. He wants to make sure when he gets to the end, of the, the end of the message, he says, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Cody came and told me this morning, nine years clean this morning. It's possible to break drug addiction. It didn't happen by Cody. It happened because God did it in her life. Amen? And I don't know what you're carrying today, and I don't know what your situation is, but I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not impossible with God. Amen? Mary's whole dilemma came down to trust. To believe in something is to trust in it. To believe in God, to have faith in Him, is to trust Him. Amen? For a while we were doing these trust falls. It was a team exercise with the group and somebody would get and stand up on a chair and they would just fall back. And they would trust that the team was going to catch them before they hit the ground. I haven't ever done that. I don't know that I trust anybody. Enough to lean back out of a chair and fall back, straight back, and just say, okay, y'all catch me when I fall. Come on, I take some trust. This morning, I, I don't know about you, and Mary was even herself troubled by this visitation. She had some questions. 
I wonder if anybody here has got a question this morning. It's okay to have a question this morning. Amen? Amen. I believe if I was in Mary's shoes, I would have some questions for God. God, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Before you leave, angel, let's get a few things documented here. Let's get a few things down. I I got some questions. But the angel, before she ever even opened her mouth, the question said, it's okay, Mary, with God. All things are possible. Amen? The angel said, He shall be great, shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom shall be no end. Mary began to understand that this Jesus would be a person of great importance, a great great man that would, would come and do great things. But Mary was a virgin. How can this be possible? And the angel answered, The Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest will overshadow thee. This was an answer, but something that seemed impossible. And so the angel put emphasis by saying, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You walked in here today thinking, there's no way this is ever going to work out. There's no way that I'll never get the answer to this. There's no way that this is ever going to fall out like it should in my life. And you have doubted and you have questioned God. And, and some things that we see as human in our flesh, we do see them as way beyond what we could ever do. And therefore we pray and we ask God for these things and sometimes we don't get an immediate answer. And we begin to say, I don't know if I can trust this. But this morning, you need to stir up the coals of trust. You you need to build a new fire in your your spirit this morning of trust. You need to say, okay, God, if you said it, that's enough. Amen. We, Brother Tenney used to talk about, we say, if you, we, we always say, if you said it, I believe it. That's enough. No, he said it. Whether you believe it or not, that's enough. That's Just skip that part. Just leave that out this morning and let the, 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 the trust that you had in God in the past, let it be refired in your, in your spirit this morning. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? Mary didn't understand the miracle. She didn't completely get her mind wrapped around it, but she did just arise and trust. She even went to to Elizabeth's, and and when she came there, when when Elizabeth heard Mary walk through the door, the babe that was in in Elizabeth's womb began to leap. And it says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. She hadn't even told her that this is going to happen yet. Elizabeth just came and said, bam, here it is. This morning, I believe God's going to put somebody in your life. It may be your pastor this morning. It may be someone else. But they're going to come and let you know God has your situation. God has it in His hand. He he knows what's going on. He's not oblivious to what's happening in your world. Our God knows. Amen? Amen. That's why you need a church. That's why you need a family like this. That's why you need somebody to speak into your life. Because God wants to work in your life. And He wants to confirm some things in your life. And you're trusting Him and you're walking with Him. But He's going to send somebody to witness that for you. And let you know that God has your situation. Amen. Have you ever been struggling? And somebody just came along and said, I got a word for you. Amen. And they confirmed what you thought was working in your life. Amen. She reaffirmed what this angel had said. Elizabeth's child began to leap and dance in her womb when Elizabeth knew that Mary was with child. Furthermore, Elizabeth knew something was special about the child. She didn't chastise Mary for being pregnant out of wedlock. Rather, she called her blessed. It's as if she knew something of God was at work before Mary even uttered a word. Sometimes while you're struggling to trust God, He's going to send the right word through the right person to bless you. You just need to trust God this morning. I said you just need to trust God this morning. 
Amen. And when Mary heard this, she said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Amen. Come on, the Lord has his hand on you today. God has not forgot you this morning. God has not left you standing in some desert somewhere and not going to hear your cry and answer your call today. Our God no one say bless you with beyond your thought process, beyond what you think is possible today, but you got to trust Him. Amen. I said you got to trust Him. Quit trusting in your own situation, in your own life, and trust Him. The miracle for Mary had now been completed. She understood that she would give birth to a king, the son of David, the Messiah. But there arose a second problem. She had a fiancé, right? And it's one thing for Mary to see the angel standing there and getting a word and getting a message. But it's another thing to go and tell your fiancé, hey, we're going to have a baby. (laughs) I hadn't been unfaithful. I've still kept myself. But an angel came over and just told me this is what's going to happen. And I'm sure Joseph said, oh yeah, baby, that sounds good. That sounds real good. I'm, I trust you in that. that. That sounds good. We know it, right? We know the story, right? Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Joseph could have had her institutionalized. He could have sent her to a place for unwed mothers. And who could blame him for not understanding that she was the first person since Adam and Eve to have a baby without procreation. But at the moment he hadn't seen the angel. But when he sees the angel, right, by his mercy, God sends an angel to Joseph. And the angel again reiterated Mary's claim. And the angel tells him, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. He's not asked to trust, he's asked to obey. Come on, you want to move into the impossible this morning? Trust and obey. Trust and obey. And when you trust and when you obey the word of God, then guess what? The impossible is possible. The impossible is coming on the scene. The thing that you need so bad is about to take place. Amen. Amen. Joseph simply had to obey. Joseph would likely be met with scorn for those that knew him. They would either surmise that Joseph and Mary were, were out, had uh, been together out of wedlock or that she had been unfaithful to him. Joseph simply had to obey the will of God in spite of what it looked like to the rest of the world. Come on, sometimes you got to live through some things that it don't, it's not real popular, it doesn't sound real good, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to everybody else. But if you want to live in the impossible, you got to trust God and you have to obey. Even when it don't seem normal, even though it don't seem make sense, even when it's not in your human mindset to do, that's what it takes. Amen? And we know Joseph was not just some guy that was stuck along for the ride. With Mary and Jesus, we know that Joseph was special. You see, Joseph was a part of the lineage of David as well. He had been chosen to participate in this miracle. He was not a simple bystander. Psalm 132 said, Therefore will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. The crown of David now flourished more than ever as the king of kings would be raised by a Jewish girl and a carpenter named Joseph. Don't seem possible, does it? Don't seem like it would all work out, does it? 
But our God doesn't specialize in just the possible. He specializes in the impossible this morning. Amen. Come on, there's some impossible things in front of you this morning. There's some things that don't seem to add up this morning. But our God says, don't give up on me. Don't quit on me. Trust me. Obey me and follow me. And I will see you through and make the impossible possible. Amen. If we want to see the promise, we have to practice obedience. Joseph practiced obedience. <clears throat> he was a loving husband. And a father, even when it all didn't make sense. And therefore, he had the privilege of raising up the Messiah. Once we practice trust and obedience, then we will begin to understand the power of the supernatural. Trust leads to obedience, and obedience leads to the miraculous. In the modern world that we live, even some who claim to be Christian struggle to believe in the supernatural. This time of year, there are people that will put a tree up in their home, wrap presents, and gather with family. But we'll overlook the real reason why we celebrate Christmas. Why? Because to them, it's just an old story. Because to them, it really didn't happen that way. Yet it is that story where I find my redemption. It's that story that brings hope to our world. It's that story that gives us such hope and such possibilities. There are biblical scholars who have been so indoctrinated by modernism today that they doubt the virgin birth. There are men, there are scholars that doubt the virgin birth and believe that Jesus rose out of a grave. <laughs> Come on. If he can raise a dead body out of a grave, then he can have a child however he wants to have a child. <laughs> but just like Mary and Joseph were faced with the dilemma of trusting God with the impossible, right? Right? We sit here today trusting God with the impossible. Jesus' life was filled with miracles from virgin birth to His earthly ministry to His bodily resurrection. And yet today, it's hard for a pastor to get up here and tell a congregation and get them to truly buy in that God can do the impossible. There are people, as soon as I announce my title today, they turn me off and tune me out because they don't believe that God can answer in the supernatural. I'm sorry to tell you, sir or ma'am, I believe in the supernatural today. I believe it's written just like it's written. I believe it happened just like they said it happened. Amen? And I believe that scripture that said, it's okay, Mary, because with God... All things are possible. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. So today I'm here to tell you, we may view this story of the impossible from a different lens. There are some things that even God would find impossible. It was impossible for God to lie. It was impossible for God's Messiah not to be born just as He predicted. It was impossible for the Holy One to fail in His mission. It was impossible for this risen heir of David not to reign as King of the universe. It was impossible that He would allow sin to have dominion over His people. And it will be impossible for Christ not to return someday to take us home with Him. Amen. So you can say he doesn't deal in the impossible, but I know he deals in the impossible. <laughs> That's the impossible that you ought to believe in today. That's the impossible you can be assured of this morning. For those of you that are worried today about unanswered prayers, worried about how it's going to pan out in this season, you're facing uncertainty or facing a trial, 
Let me give you one more impossible to believe in this morning. Romans 8 and 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. It's impossible to be separated from the love of God this morning. You ought to be on your feet. You ought to be thanking Him today. Amen. That there is an impossibility. My God hasn't forgotten me. My God knows where I am today. And I'm going to trust Him. And I'm going to obey Him. And I'm going to see the miraculous take place. Stand with me in this place today. It is impossible today to be too far from His reach. Let me say that one more time this morning. It is impossible today to be too far from His reach. You are trying to calculate and figure it out and and work it out and see how... Put your calculator down. Trust God. Obey God today. And let Him work it out. You see, before you got here this morning, He was setting things up. He was aligning things in your life. Before you ever walked in this room today, He was aligning things. He was was aligning my words, His words, the songs that we played today, the music that was sung today. It was all aligning up for you to once again hear. My situation ain't over yet. It's not done yet. There's still life. There's still breath. It's not over. Amen. It's not over till he says it. So I found a very interesting article that our district superintendent sent out this month in his uh, bulletin that he sends out, his newsletter. He brought out some facts about the wise men or or the magi that we call them. How did these men even know to look for Jesus the Messiah? How did they know to look for Him? How did they even understand this? What sent them in the first place? This is so cool, so neat. You see, Israel had forgotten God. Babylonian Empire came in, overtook them. They brought out some of those Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they took out another little boy. What was his name? Oh, his name was Daniel, right? The one that prayed three times a day. Daniel in the lion's den. You've heard, you know who Daniel is. Daniel that wouldn't eat their meal and said, come back in a few days and let's see who's healthy and who's not. That same Daniel, he became the Magi of the Magi. You know that? He became the wisest of the wise men. So how did these people know to come? 600 years before Jesus is ever born, Daniel's in a foreign land in Babylonian captivity saying, and here's the prophecy that's going to take place. Somewhere down the road, this is what's going to happen. It was so impactful. Daniel's word was so impactful that it lasted for 600 years in their culture. They were still looking for what Daniel told them was going to happen 600 years later. Our God's a God of order. Our God's a God of the impossible. Amen? How is it possible that these wise men just showed up? Because God put it in order. Because God put it in place a long time ago. Because He already had things aligning and working to make it where it should be. You walk in here this morning and you say, I've had a problem and I've had it for two weeks and it hadn't gone away. God's been ordering things for centuries. For millennials. He's been ordering things. And you think He can't take care of my problem? 
He, he can't handle my situation. Come on. He put the sun where it needed to be and the earth where it needed to be and the rotation it needed to be at the speed that it needed to be. And you think he can't solve your problem? You, you think he can't fix what's going on in your world? When he can have a child through a virgin? And you think he can't fix your problem this morning? Come on, my God loves the impossible. My God deals in the impossible. My God welcomes the impossible this morning. Come on, you're not forgotten this morning. You're not a mistake this morning. You're not alone this morning. Your problem's not impossible this morning. Are you willing to trust Him and obey? That's the answer this morning. That's, that's, that, that's, the, that's where it all meets together this morning. Are you willing to trust and obey? And I believe this morning your problem, your situation, your impossibility can be brought to Him right now. Oh, Heavenly Father, I feel your presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do in impossible situations that exist in the hearts and minds of your people this morning. But God, what they think is impossible, you're ready, oh God, to open up windows of opportunity. You're ready to dissipate doubt, oh God. You're ready to move only as only you can move today, God. Come on, step out from where you are and walk into the presence of the God of the impossible this morning. Come on, step out from where you are by faith this morning. Come on, trust Him with your need this morning. Trust Him with your family this morning. Trust Him with your situation today. Trust Him with your need today. And just obey this morning and walk out in faith and say, okay, God, I trust you. I'm walking in obedience right now, God. I have something that's greater than me, oh Lord, that I can't solve on my own. But I know you can I trust you today, God. And I look to you today, God. And because I do that, oh Lord Jesus, the supernatural is about to take place. What I can't do and what I can't figure out, you're about to do it, Lord Jesus. And I give you praise. And